Hi everyone. I'm going to do a few representative problems that are on the final exam. I've given you this handout. It's kind of lengthy. I think it's 12 pages long. But the entire packet is multiple choice, which we're not really used to doing a lot of multiple choice, but I thought we'd better practice up on that since your entire final exam is going to be multiple choice. And I know many of you think multiple choice is easier. It is not because there is no partial credit, so it's either right or wrong. Um, we're not going to be grading them. They go through a machine using the bubble sheets. And so it's very easy to get a low score on this type of exam. Um, what I've done is I've gone through the exam itself and I've uh, outlined how many questions are from what topics. And for each of those topics, I've tried to put together two or four representative problems. So and I don't have time on the video to do all of the problems on a 12-page packet. So I thought what I would do is do one of each type for you and then you'll do the rest in class. Okay, so let's get going. So the very first topic we're going to talk about is finding the square roots of perfect squares. And if you recall, perfect squares are squares where you're multiplying something by itself um, and um, therefore it can, we can take the square root. Okay, so we could do the inverse operation of squaring. So let's look at that. So x squared, that's a perfect square. If x is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, etc. And when we looked at the multiplication chart, we could see a definite pattern where the perfect squares were kind of along this diagonal on that multiplica multiplication chart. Well, the inverse operation of squaring is the square root, and the square root means find the number when multiplied by itself equals what's underneath this uh, square root bar here. Okay, so I'm going to just choose randomly this one right here. What is the value of the expression square root of 64? And we have to think, what are the numbers? Well, if you don't know, and I don't want you to use a calculator on this, um, you can just practice up 7 times 7 equals 49. So that's not big enough. And I ran out of room already here. Sorry about that. Um, 7 times 7 is 49. And go up 1 because we want to get bigger. And hopefully you can see that 8 times 8 is 64. So the square root of that perfect 64 is... 8 or D. All right, the next topic we're going to be looking at is a biggie. It's simplifying numerical expressions using the order of operations. Hopefully you're thinking about the order of operations right away, which is PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, just to jog your memory. PEMDAS, starting from the top, let me do that arrow. When we're smushing a bunch of numbers down to 1, we go from the top down, and the P is for parentheses, but more than parentheses. It's really for grouping. E is for exponents. Multiplication and division are at the same priority level, and we do those left to right. You want to remind yourself of that, left to right. And addition and subtraction are left to right. So I am going to do this problem over here in the lower left. So I've got a whole bunch of things going on. I've got parentheses going on here. But when I go inside the parentheses, that's a group. So I want to work inside that group, but I've got an exponent in there. So that's going to be, I've got to work in the group, but then I immediately encounter an exponent. So I have to simplify that first. So I've got 16 here, 4 times 4, or 4 squared is 16. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace that exponent with a 16. Now I have to continue to work inside the parentheses. 16 minus uh, 10 is 6, and I'm going to move over here to the right just so I have some room. And I've got my 2 and 24 minus. Well, what do I have here left? I have subtraction and I have multiplication. When 2 is hugging those parentheses, that's multiplication. Multiplication is before subtraction on my scale here. So I have to do that first. 2 times 6 is 12. So I have 24 minus 12, or 12. And that is the answer. 
Okay, moving on to the next topic. Simplifying numerical expressions using the order of operations. So it's exactly the same thing, same topic as above, but this time I have some big quotients here. And <clears throat> I want you to remember this, and this is very important. This is on your final, a problem that looks like this. It's kind of like each top and bottom are like in parentheses themselves. They are groups. So you have to kind of work within the group on the top and work within the group on the bottom before you ever take this quotient. Remember, quotient means division. So that is division. Before we can do that division, we have to work within the group. It's like there's an invisible uh, set of parentheses on the top and the bottom. So let's start. I have here on the top 24 divided by 2 plus 2. Well, the division is a uh, stronger priority or above addition, so I have to do that first. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So I'm going to replace that, and then I still have my add 2. On the bottom, I have 9 minus 4 plus 2. Well, subtraction and addition, we don't do... Oh, I see I made a mistake over here. Um, this is supposed to be addition and subtraction. So on uh, subtraction and, ad and addition here, just because this is an A first and an S, that doesn't mean we do A first. We work these addition and subtraction left to right, left to right. So that would tell us we have to do this 9 minus 4 first, left to right. So we have 5 plus 2. Now I still have this invisible grouping going on. I still have a top numerator and a denominator. So I have to work within the group. 12 plus 2 is 14. 5 plus 2 is 7. And only at this ending point here, when we've got this completely simplified on the top and the bottom, can we take the uh, quotient or division. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Okay, and we see here on the next page I have um, two more examples like that, and I'm going to let you do those on your own. Okay. Next, evaluating algebraic expressions using, uh, including those with exponents. So I have four different expressions here. I have uh, an expression here, and I'm given values for those uh, variables. I have another expression, similar one down here, and I'm given... Um, some values. I have this expression with exponents and I'm given a value, etc. I think I'm going to do one of these here, these um, longer ones with three variables. I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to replace what's four there, the coefficient in front of a. They're hugging each other. That means multiplication. Now when I swap out the a and I put in its value here, 8, I personally like to show that with the parentheses instead of the dot. Many of you seem to like the dot, which is fine. Um, now when I go here and subtract b, b is positive, so I can go ahead and just say minus 12. But if b were negative and I was subtracting a negative number, then I would have to add 12, but in this case I'm good. Plus 3, and I'm going to swap out that c, and I'm going to put in negative 5. Personally, I find it easier to use parentheses to show my multiplication. So I'm just going to remind myself of the order of operations. I've got uh, some multiplication here, and I've got multiplication here, and I have to do those first before I can do the addition and subtraction that we have up there. So 40, or 4 times 8 is 32. I'm just going to rewrite this, subtract 12. And positive 3 times a negative 5 is negative 15. Now I have just subtraction left and I'm going to have to work left to right, okay? So moving left to right here, 32 minus 12 is uh, 20 minus 15, and 20 minus 15 is 5. And I want you on your exam to do that level of work. I want to see one step change at a time working vertically on order of operations. Okay, and let's go to the next. <clears throat> You've been doing this a lot. We really, Miss Russell and I have been really trying to um, 
focus on this type of problem here. Write numbers from smallest to largest or least to greatest, and I promised you that this would be on the final. I know a lot of you don't like these types of problems. Let's go ahead and look at this one down here in the lower right. Here I've got a bunch of numbers. The first thing you're going to do on your exam is you are going to sketch a number line. Sketch a number line. Look to see the absolute smallest number. The smallest number that I see on this list is negative 2. The biggest number I see is positive 6. So you know that somewhere here we want, I'm going to go here, I've got a negative 2 and I want to go up to positive 6. I know those are the least and the biggest. So how do I make a nice even scale? Well, negative 2 up to 0. If I just wanted to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, that's 2 units. And then 0 up to 6 is 6 units. So 2 and 6 would be 8 units. So in between this tick mark and this tick mark, I want to split this up into 8 equal units. So what I like to do, if I know it's an even number, is just find the middle. So now I'm into two units. Let's find the middle again between both sides. Now I'm into four units. And what will happen if I now split each one up? I'll have two, four, six, and eight. So that's kind of how I like to set up my number line. And now I'll just label it. Negative one, zero, positive one, two, three, four, and five. Notice I'm not doing my scale using these numbers. I'm just making a nice even number line. <clears throat> Excuse me. And once I do that, then I put the numbers on here. So we know we have this negative two. I'm going to graph my negative two with a point. All right, I'm going to cross it off my list. And I could list that again if I want to. We know we have a positive 6, so I'm going to put my point up at positive 6. And let's see, what's the next easiest one to graph? I think the next easiest one to graph is not the fractions, but here, this negative 1. So go ahead and put that negative 1 on your number line. All right, now we're down to the fractions. Let's start with 2 thirds. If you see that 2 is smaller, the numerator is smaller than 3, you should immediately think this is less than the number 1 because 2 divided by 3, well 3 is too big to go into 2. So it goes in there 0 times, right? I'm going to multiply that over and 2 minus 0 is 2. I'm going to have to add decimals. It's got to be smaller than 1. That's what I want you to see. So 3 into 20 is 6, and that's 18, and the remainder is 2. Bring down another 0 here, um, and hopefully you see that it's going to end up being 6, 6 repeating. So if you look over here, I'm going to change my color. It's, it's greater than 0 because it's positive, but it's less than 1, and it's in thirds. So all you need to do is between 0 and 1 is break that piece into thirds. I've got one-third, two-third, three-thirds, and three-thirds is the same thing as number one. So hopefully you can see how to find that two-thirds, or roughly where it is. You can make your own scale there. So there's my two-thirds. And finally we have negative one-half. Again, one is a smaller number than two. So if this were positive, I'm just going to, you know, pretend that negative is not there. If this were positive, I hope you see that this is greater than 0 and less than 1. Well, because it happens to be negative, it's between the 0 and negative 1. And it is exactly a half. If you turn that into a decimal, it would be negative 0.5. So hopefully you know that that is right in the middle there. And... I'm just going to put my point there. Whoops, and thought I changed colors. And that's negative one half. So if I were to list these numbers least to greatest, it would be going from left to right. I'm starting out with negative two, negative one, negative one half, two thirds, and six. Now, when you start listing a bunch of these numbers, you know, left to right, 
it gets a little bit confusing, at least for my eyes. So you want to be super, super careful when you answer this question. And as it turns out, A is the answer. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 2 thirds, and 6. So be very careful when you start seeing a string of numbers. It's easy to get them confused. Okay, and I know these are not your favorite, these translation questions, but just please try to remember some key things here. Product is multiply. Um, at least, you have to be at least 18 years old to vote. That would mean greater than or equal to. So at least translates to greater than or equal to twice. It's a key word. That means two times or double. Difference. That means subtract. And is. Is directly corresponds to equals. Five times the sum. Well, if you have five times the sum of something, you know right away that five is multiplying parentheses. If you see five times the sum or five times the difference, that's not five times a number. That's not five times a letter. That is five times something in, uh, combined, if you will. So right away, I hope you can see that that can't be it and that can't be it. This, These two here represent five times a sum. And sum, of course, is add. Is greater than or equal to, is greater than or equal to, that is is important. That means it's an inequality if you have that verb in there. If it's just greater than, then sometimes it could mean just addition. Sum again is add. And the sum of nine times a number is less than or equal to, is less than or equal to. So um, you can immediately eliminate some of these. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish this one down here in the lower right. The sum of nine times a number. We look down in the answer key and we see n. So nine times a number is n. Nine times n is nine n. So the sum of nine n and five, the sum of nine n and five, is less than or equal to six. So we can eliminate those parentheses there. N a nine n plus five is less than or equal to six. Well, clearly I made a mistake here. I copied and pasted or something from another problem because you can see none of these have six. So I know how I'm going to correct this. I'm going to just cross out that six and I'm going to put twelve because that's what we have here. So the answer is D. Okay, find the change in temperature or find the change in elevation when given a range. That is our next topic. And don't try to memorize this, just try to reason through it with a picture. So I, in these temperature ones, I strongly recommend you draw some kind of thermometer. And you always put the zero here we've got negative 5, so that's going to be below the 0. And you've got negative 13. And we want to know the difference between those two. Over here in this thermometer, it's a little bit different. I've got a 0. I've got positive 35 way up here. That means it's above 0. And negative 12 down here. Notice I have two uh, regions here that we have to add together. Um, 35 going down to 0 is 35 degrees. 0 going down to negative 12 is another 12 degrees. So hopefully you can see that you would add these. Whereas here, we're only, we're both in the same sign, negative 5 and negative 13. We only have one little region here. So hopefully you can see that we're subtracting 8 or we're subtracting the two numbers. The signs here, being subtraction or addition, are referring to what direction you're going. Are you going lower in temperature or higher in temperature? In both of these cases, 
we're starting at a higher temperature and going down, so that's why we would represent it as a negative number. Okay, let's move on to the and um, the next topic is solving a single variable equation including those with variables on both sides of the equal sign and solving proportions using cross products. I think what I'm going to do is choose uh, a couple of these because we haven't been doing this for a while. So the first thing I'm going to choose is over here to the right. Um, here's an equation where we have distributive property at play. We have variables on both sides, so it's somewhat complex. So, as always, we have to get these um, terms inside the parentheses out. So we're going to use a distributive property. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 5 is 15. Equals 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So don't forget, I know a lot of you guys are really good at doing the first um, multiplication step here, but a lot of people forget about that second loop. So that's why I put those arcs in there. Okay, we want to get the x terms together. I have 12x over here and 9x over here. They've got to come together. Um, since 9 is less than 12, I think I'm going to subtract 9x, although you could have subtracted 12x from the other side if you wanted to and deal with negative numbers. So 9x minus 9x, of course, reduces out to 0, and 12x minus 9x is 3x minus 6. Now at this point, when we chose to move the x terms over here to the right, I have to move this negative 6 or subtraction of 6 over here to the left. Um, and get that constant over here with its like terms. So the op or the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. We end up with a 3x coming down equals, and what we have here is 21. And the final op inverse operation here is we're going to undo this multiplication with division. Always go to the unknown. Go directly to the unknown. Don't be working away from the variable here and x is equal to 7. You can always check your work by substituting in this 7 here for x right up here in the original equation. And if it's the correct answer, you will see true equality. Okay, um, I am going to do a proportion problem. In the interest of time, I'm not going to do all of these problems. However, on this one, it's been a while since we've done that, so I want to just remind you that the first step you would do here is get rid of that fraction. We want to multiply this by 4 in order to undo the division of 4. And whatever you do on one side, you got to do on the other. So I will give you that hint on that problem. Okay, now I'm going to choose the proportion over here on the left. Remember when we did proportions here, we had um, we solved using cross products. So we cross over that equal sign. They're really inverse operations. So if you remember, I used to do these butterfly wings. So 5 times 4 is 20. And then when I go to multiply that 2 up, the 2 is multiplying the whole enchilada here. So you have to put that whole sum, x plus 1, inside parentheses because the 2 is multiplying the whole thing. And as always, we're going to have to bust that out here with the distributive property. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. My unknown is right here, so I look what's around it. I've got a bunch of stuff going on here. We're going to undo it from the bottom of PEMDAS up. We've got addition of 2, and we've got multiplication of 2. We're working from the bottom up. I'm going to get rid of the 2 of addition first, and I've got 18. 2x, and then I'm going to undo that multiplication with division, and we get x equals 9. As always, you can always check your answer here, substitute that 9 back in here, and you will get true equality if you do so. Okay, and that's the end of this page. In the interest of time, I'm going to publish this video as, as is, and I'm going to do a part 2 for the second half of the packet. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe.